Okay, this is going to be the first in a series on working with the command line. And the command line is a text-based interface with your computer, and it's quite a bit different from what we're used to, which is the GUI or graphical user interface where we point, click, and drag to accomplish a lot of our tasks. There's lots of short programs that come native to Mac OS and Linux, and for the most part Windows, with Windows 10 including PowerShell. There's also a lot of third-party tools you can install, uh, but we're just going to be using uh, some of the very common or essential tools for the command line. We're going to be using a bash terminal in Mac OS to demonstrate these tools. Some of these work in PowerShell, but you may want to install Git by following this link uh, and then run a bash window from within Git. So we're going to call these the 10 tools that you need. All right, and I've sort of listed them in the order that I'm going to talk about them in. We're going to be making a directory, switching into that directory, creating files, listing files, printing some output to the screen, moving, copying, and deleting files, displaying the contents to the screen, and then uh, doing some miscellaneous work with the sequence command. So we'll go ahead and jump right into the command window now. Okay, so I've launched a command window in the, my Mac, and I did that by going to the Spotlight Search and typing Terminal. Uh, you can do something similar in the Linux operating system, and if you're in Windows, then you're going to want to have installed Git, and then you launch a Git Bash window. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is to make a new directory, and I do that with the make dir command and then I give it a name. All right, so I'm going to make a new folder, it's called command, and when I execute it, all right, the first thing that happens is, well, it doesn't give me a message that I did anything. And so what next happens is people will want to try that again because they don't think it worked the first time. And when I do that, we see I get this message, file already exists. And so what happens in the command line environment is it doesn't tell you when you do something right, it only tells you uh, when it can't do what you want it to do. So basically this is saying, well, I can't do that because there's already a directory named command. All right, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is to switch into that directory. And so I do the cd command and then the name of the directory I want to move to. I hit enter and I can tell that worked because now there's a prefix command uh, in front of this folder, which is actually my home directory. All right, so when you launch a terminal or a bash session, it's going to start you in your home directory. And then a lot of times you're going to want to move around from there. All right, so you do that using the cd command. If you ever need to get back to your home directory from anywhere, I can use cd, the tilde, and the forward slash, and that will get me back to the home directory. All right, I do want to be in command, so I'm going to cd back into there. And there's kind of a shortcut for also moving up one level in the directory structure. You can use cd and two dots, and that will move you back up. All right, the next thing we're going to do then is make a file in here. We're going to make an empty file. We're going to do that using the touch command and I'll just unimaginatively call it the file and I'll put the text extension on it. Alright, I can make a file without any extension but if I use the txt extension it can be used by a lot of other programs. I hit enter, I get no message so it must have worked. Let's see if it worked. I'm going to get a listing of the directory. I do that with the ls command and we can see, okay, there's the file inside my folder. It's called file.txt. If I put the switch minus L on the ls command, it'll give me more details about that file. Okay, so it'll tell me what the permissions are on it. This one says I can read and write to it uh, at the top level, and other users can only read to it. Okay, uh, it tells me who made it, it tells me how big it is, and it tells me when it was made. Uh, there's one other quick switch I'll show you in LS, and that's minus A. Uh, minus A gives you about the same information as the LS does, but it also shows what are called hidden directories. All right, so it actually has a reference to itself, the dot, and it has a reference to uh, the directory above. Alright, the next command I'm going to show is echo. And echo prints whatever you type next to 
the screen. All right, so if I wanna see the address of my home directory, I start with the dollar sign and then I type home. And one other thing you wanna be aware of in the command line is that it's case sensitive. So home all caps is different than home in lowercase. The dollar sign indicates it's an environment variable uh, and this environment variable home is always a variable. All right, sometimes we make environment variables and they're only available for the current session in the terminal. So they go away once you restart the terminal or once you close the terminal. All right, so when I echo home, I get the address of my home directory. And then maybe I want to write that into a file. All right, so I can do that with echo. And by default, echo writes the, uh, the home directory to the screen. But if I use the greater than sign, I can redirect it into another file. Okay, so if we list that, we see now that there are two files and this one has 17 uh, bytes in it. If I wanna see the contents of that file, I can write them to the screen with cat. Okay, so that just prints out the contents of the current file. Right, I'm gonna give you a bonus command. I said there were 10, we're actually gonna have 11, and the bonus command is this one clear, so I can get back up to the top of the screen. All right, and yep, when I type clear and hit enter, uh, about what you expect to happen, happens. All right, so the next thing, or the next uh, batch of commands I'm gonna show are about working with existing files. All right, so we might want to move them or copy them or delete them. All right, so I am going to create a copy of a file that's already on my computer. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do after CP is tell it the name of the file that I want to copy. All right, so the name of the file I want to copy is in this folder. All right, and the name of the file is this random walk dot. All right, so the first thing you see is that, okay, it doesn't actually give me an error, but it looks like I've done something wrong here. And what I've done wrong is I haven't told it where I want to copy it, okay? So let's try that again. And uh, instead of typing the command over, all I have to do is hit the up arrow once, and it shows me whatever the last command is. And if I continue to hit the up arrow, I can move back through commands that I've already typed. So it actually uh, saves a lot of typing that way. All right, so what I wanna do is create a copy of this file in the current directory, the command directory, all right? So I can do that with a shortcut dot. Okay? So this will, if it works, copy this random pi file into the current directory. I hit enter and I get this message, all right? And basically what it's telling me is, well, I can't find that file, okay? So I must not have given it the right address or that file doesn't exist. So we'll try it one more time and this time I'll say, okay, it is in my home directory in one drive. Okay, so this is how I indicate that I have to move back up to the home directory first, go look for this folder OneDrive, and then try to find um, the random walk pi in that directory structure. I hit enter, and it must have worked, right, because there is no message. All right, we can verify that it worked using the ls command, and there it is. If I want to see the contents of that file on the screen, I just write them to the screen using the cat command. Okay, and so there it is. Okay, we can't interact with it, but at least we can see what the contents are. All right, I'm gonna clear the screen one more time. All right, and let's say we wanna create a copy of that file. All right, or we wanna rename the file. Okay, if I just wanna rename it, well, I can use move mv. Okay, so move uh, as opposed to copy will move the file here permanently, all right? So if I hit executed move instead of CP initially, uh, I would no longer have a copy of the file uh, in the, in the uh, OneDrive folder that it was in, okay? If I wanna rename it, I can move random walk.py into a new file and we'll call it random sojourn. Pi. Okay, when we list the directory now, we'll see that, okay, that random walk is gone. It's been replaced by a random sojourn. And if we want to delete a file, I can use the rm and then the file name. Okay, listing the contents again, we can see that file.txt is now gone. Okay, so we're ready for the last command I'm going to show you, and that is the sequence command. All right, and sequence can be used a lot of different ways. Okay, so if I just do seek and then 10, we'll get the numbers one through 10 written to the screen. If I do seek 
10 and then redirect it into a file, okay, the contents are going to be written to that file. All right, so there's lots of ways we can use it. All right, so I can just tell it how long to be, or I can tell it where to start, all right, uh, how to step, and then where to stop. So that gives me the positive integers up to 10, the even ones. All right, one other way you can use sequence, and, and this is pretty useful, is to create a bunch of empty files or a bunch of files with uh, some content in them. So I am going to use touch and then I'm going to set an environment variable equal to the sequence and then to get some text input I'm going to use minus F then I'm going to give it a file name and then I'm going to use a formatting string percent G and then I'll give it the text extension and then I'll tell it to go 1 to 10. Okay. And if I list folder now we see that I have 10 new files Okay, so I hope that helps with getting started with the command line.